cards. Where's the other cards? And there's just some lamp posts. Something that goes down the pot. interviewed this month in 84, although I didn't start till the January, I don't think, 85, so sort of, I was in, well, were we in the boardroom? No, the old boardroom, like wherever it was. So 30 years this, this month, yeah. And um, it was quite an exciting time. But I think I think at the interview you were judged on, could you balance a glass of sherry and hold a, a plate of a plate of salad and talk to somebody at the same time? Yeah, oh, so this is retirement mark three. Um, John kindly hosted a fantastic um, a garden party in somewhere it rained. And then Caroline ha hosted another one where the sun shone and we had singing girls. So uh, it was a uh, fantastic time. I've just written down how it was. Well, first of all, it's been an honour and a privilege, not just to work with you lot and here at the, at the pageant. Um, really half my adult life. Yeah. Um, but it's um, been an honour and privilege to, to work with all our wonderful patients, and they're the ones, they're, they're the people that keep us going, aren't they? They're, they're marvellous, uh, and I will miss that. So when we arrived, Skaboo was at Northgate, which is a hospital on the other side of the river, and we were on a one in two, and um, we had one registrar and three SHOs. Two of the SHOs were GP trainees, and um, we would go off to do all sorts of stuff. We would go off to Norfolk and Norwich for a training afternoon, leaving one SHO to manage two hospitals. No one, I mean, Nick, I'm, I'm sure nowadays he would have no, not put, us, put us in jail. <laughs> not allowed. Uh, we had a ventilator that just went puff, puff, puff. I think it was an on and off button. And I think you could get either air or 100% oxygen, but nothing much in between. Um, what else? I think you could do the rate, the pressure maybe. So really basic stuff. But not many babies die. You know, all did very well. We were very self-sufficient. My other memory of Northgate is that um, when he went into the secretary's office, it was a great cloud of cigarette smoke. <laughs> <laughs> not allowed nowadays. Yeah. So there were no emails, there were just memos. And I was going to tease um, Tracy Matthews today because she and I have a long-running um, memo sort of, I'm going to say squabble. <coughs> About twice a year, I send her mileage forms. She says, Dear Richard, once again, you failed the trust guidelines on sending monthly mileage forms. Just this, just this once, I will, I will ask the finance director to authorise it, but don't do it again. So I'm going to do it again with you on Monday. So. <laughs> <laughs> um, <clears throat> we've had a fantastic um, enhancement of the hospital over the years both in our department and in the other departments that work so closely with us. Um, when I arrived, we had, we were talking about the ologies, we had an asthma clinic, uh, David might remember this, we had an asthma clinic, a diabetes clinic, and a handicap clinic. The handicap clinic then became the multidisciplinary clinic, but that fell out of favour because some of the parents thought they were going to be multiply disciplined. When they <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I still think, I'm not sure whether that term still, still, um, still holds true. So we just had that. So in your clinic, you were likely to bump into somebody with leukaemia or arthritis or epilepsy or some weird gastroenterological problem. So the general clinics were really very exciting and rather unpredictable. Um, I, would, I would just like to pay tribute to several jewels in our crown in our department particularly the Children's Community Nursing Team, CCNT, uh, the play therapists, uh, the paediatric nurse practitioners, all our um, allied health professionals, so the physios, the dieticians, the speech and language therapists, occupational therapists, both here at the Paget and uh, in the Child Development Centre. Um, the other department I'd like to pay tribute to is PALS. I was just saying to Nick that um, um, over the years I thought, oh, I'm not many complaints, and then I've had probably more complaints in the last year and a half than I have had in 30 years, which is uh, a bit nerve-wracking, but uh, but it's improved my relationship with the PALS department. <laughs> <laughs> um, I would like to um, uh, also pay tribute to the, to the Child Development Centre, 
when we arrived, we used to, I was quite interested in, in handicaps, we used to do um, assessments in what used to be the secretary's office in the corridor, which is just being broken into by the building people. And once or twice a week, the lay therapist used to come over and we'd see these children, the occupational therapist, etc., etc. And then eventually, um, Ajit Burr and I got together and decided we, you know, we wanted to expand this over to the uh, Child Development Centre, and um, that's, that's how we moved forward. The other people who I would like to pay tribute to are, are our fantastic secretarial staff, and uh, Liz, who is here today, is hiding again. Where is she? <laughs> um, been my right-hand woman for many years, and uh, many thanks to her. Also, our ward clerks, our clinic receptionists, our child protection team, and the audit um, group as well, the audit professionals. I don't think we could have gone. Um, we can't work without, without these marvellous, marvellous people. Medical Staff Committee, uh, Nick mentioned that. I think, did you mention Medical Staff Committee, Chairman? No, no. I'm chairman. I was Chairman of the Medical Staff Committee for a very exciting year. And um, <clears throat> in those days, the Chairman had a gavel, a wooden hammer with a little wooden thing. And um, at the end of the thing, he would go bang, and no one was allowed to say anything else after that. It's great power the Chairman had. Um, it used to be dominated by a few people who seemed to have opinions on everything. <laughs> Uh, in my year, we had something called clinical governance that came in. We didn't know what clinical governance was. <laughs> and I remember reading, I took a memo from the Times or the Telegraph or something and read it out to the MSC and there was stunned silence. <coughs> Nobody was interested in clinical governance. <laughs> we seemed to spend all time talking about which GP surgeries were in contract or not. It didn't happen now. And we used to spend a lot of time discussing different drugs. Someone used to come and talk to us about various PPIs and, and H2 blockers and all sorts of stuff which we wouldn't discuss now in the medical staff committee. The other day someone came up to me in the corridor and said, um, so sorry to hear you're retiring, Dr. Soft, it's really wonderful work. And I didn't know who she was. <laughs> I've got a very bad memory and I said, well, and I was able to fluff my way and say, well, it's been very nice working for you. I still don't know who she was. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to pay um, tribute to non-pediatric colleagues. I'm not going to list all the, but you know who you all are. They run from A to Z, A and E, right down to X-ray. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> and they've learnt over the years not to treat children, I think, as small adults. And I think that's very important. Um, what else has happened? We've got the fabulous Education and Training Centre. I'd like to pay tribute to my colleagues over there in the UEA office. Um, and when you walk around the trust now, I think it's wonderful to see sort of confidence in the investment that's going on, which, which I think proves that this possibility will, will uh, continue, because obviously there were the worries a few years ago that we might be gobbled up or swallowed up by someone else, but you can see we're all the new building going on. And of course, very excited to see the new theatre block going out outside the paediatric offices. I think it wasn't <laughs> until Tracy discovered that they were going to break into the secretary's office that um, we had to find a new home for, for, for them and us. So that's another another story. Perinatal. Right. When, when I arrived, we'd had no perinatal group. Are there any midwives in Austria? I don't know, maybe not. Anyway, um, so we decided...